presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport. In the show, we celebrate the B Win MVP for October, Nikola Mirotic. The two Bogdanoviches go head to head in a close game. For Taylor Rochester, coming to Europe was his dream. Demarcus Nelson is the B Win MVP of round four. And we check out the top three. We landed in Strasbourg, France, home of the game of the week between Strasbourg and Real Madrid. The Spanish team came into the match still unbeaten. The new signings have slipped into coach Pablo Lazo's style of spectacular attacking play with ease and have bonded immediately with the veterans. The talent of Nikola Mirotic in particular has made life so far this season very easy. The Spanish power forward of Montenegrin origins stands out for talent and technique. His movements in the paint and his shot from the distance make him one of the most unstoppable players in the tournament. His Real Madrid won their three October games by an average of 26.3 points and Nicola helped the team by scoring 18 points against Jalgiris Kaunas in the first game when he was awarded the B-Win MVP of that week, then 12 against Broza Baskets Bamberg and last but not least 19 against EA7 Emporio Armani Milan. Adding rebounds, assists, steals and blocks, Mirotic has averaged a performance index rating of more than 25, better than anyone else in October. The two-time Euroleague rising star in 2011 and 2012, the only player to have ever won it twice, is no longer a promising talent, even if he is only 22, but is now a brilliant star demonstrating his full potential game after game. Numbers that earned him the title of B-Win MVP for October. The Renu Sport was the arena for the challenge between the French runners-up and the Spanish champions. Strasbourg let us into the locker rooms before the game, where the teams were preparing themselves psychologically. First tip off, the Blancos took the lead. For once, they didn't require the full power of Mirotic. Rudy Fernandez, top scorer with 24 points, delighted the crowd with his skills and jumps, pushing and ending many fast breaks. Eventually, Madrid eased to an 85-66 win. Centre Alexia Jaja produced a proud performance for the home side with 23 points, but unfortunately it was not enough to avoid defeat. Uh, I tried to do everything I could uh, to put my, my team in good position to win the game. Uh, it worked pretty well for me, for myself, but uh, fortunately we, uh, we didn't come up with the win. Even if it's a big team, I think we could have done something better, but uh, I'm proud of myself. Yeah. Uh, I like to dunk, so you know, every time I had the ball and I have the opportunity to dunk, that's what I'm going to do. And the fans love it here, here so that's I'm just going to keep it up that way. Europe's best airline powers up Europe's best league, Turkish Airlines EuroLeague. Partizan Nis Belgrade is not only a basketball team, it's a kind of religion. 
for players and above all, supporters. Bogdan Bogdanovic is conscious about the responsibility involved with wearing these colours and playing for this club. It isn't just about tradition, there is something more at stake. It's a really big honour to be a part of, uh, of that team. That's the best thing for me to, to practice with and work hard with, uh, with Vujosevic. He's a great coach. Everybody know how, how it's a tough practice in, in Partizan and that's the reason why so many talented and young players coming in Partizan to grow up in big players. Big honours, big duties, accompanied by a huge burden of work in terms of hours. Seven per day. When is the day before game? We have less like five, but with meetings. Bogdan is now playing his second Turkish Airlines EuroLeague. Last season he started extremely well before getting injured and played an exceptional game against Seska Moscow. I can't forget that moment. It was uh, it, we, we lost that game. Uh, I missed the shot for for win. We go in overtime. That we lost. He has an ideal role model, but he never met him last year. Diamantidis. I like his style of playing. He's like my size, so... Bogdan this year averaged almost 50% from three-pointers, but being only 21, he expects so much more from himself. I grew up in uh, my pull-ups from dribbles, and maybe that from uh, layups from contact. Maybe you forgot something. Defense, of course. And his teammates had their hands full Friday night when they met another Bogdanovic in Belgrade, Bayan, the star of Fenerbahce Ulker Istanbul, older and more famous, born and raised in Croatia. Bogdan, the young Serbian, scored six points, while two of his teammates, Joffrey Lovergne and Terence Kinsey, combined for 38. It wasn't enough to match Fenerbahce's Bogdanovic, top scorer with 26 points and a fantastic 6 for 9 three pointers, and to limit the Turkish team. Coach Jelko Obradovic remains undefeated after winning 88 78 and coming back in the second half thanks also to a good performance by Bo McCaleb. Basketball is definitely on the rise. The proof lies in the results of FC Bayern Munich and Broza Baskets Bamberg in the first part of the season. And someone seems to have understood the potential of this movement. It's the case of American guard Taylor Rochester, who spent time at both Göttingen and Alba Berlin, and who currently plays for Montepaschi Siena. I heard a lot about the, the German league and uh, wanted to start my career in Germany. Since uh, about the age 10, 11, 12, uh, I've been telling friends and family, um, everybody that would listen, that I wanted to play basketball professionally and that I wanted to play in Europe. At the time, I didn't even know if there were leagues in Europe, but um, my whole life I've, I've wanted to travel and see the world, and of course my passion was always basketball, so it was a perfect fit. And playing in Europe has also given him the opportunity to visit and live in some of the most fascinating cities in the world. Moving from Germany to Turkey and then Tuscany has made him realise that he has the best job in the world. I think I lived uh, a very, very blessed life. Uh, I try to stay thankful every day. Um, this is living a dream. So to be able to go to Berlin, uh, Istanbul, Siena is just, um, I feel very, very blessed. I try to have uh, lots of family, friends come visit and share the experiences with me, but uh, I wouldn't want it any other way, and um, this is a perfect job.
Besides being one of the stars of the EuroLeague, Taylor Rochester is also an up-and-coming businessman. He recently launched a line of sportswear with some friends. He doesn't lack ambition, and it seems that things are primed to go well both on and off the court. I think a, a lot of athletes look for different outlets, uh, whether it's music or uh, whatever it may be. And for me, uh, a friend of mine came to me about the idea of uh, Rock Out BU and Roby, and uh, it was a perfect uh, situation where I could have something going off the court. Uh, we got uh, some downtime, not much, but some downtime to uh, experience different avenues. So to have a clothing company is something that's exciting for me and keeps my mind off of basketball. Uh, Rock Out BU is just is for everybody to, to be themselves and express themselves and um, feel free to be comfortable in their own skin. So uh, when people wear our brand, uh, we encourage them to be whoever they want to be, whether it be a teacher, whether it be a professional athlete, or whether it be a father or a mother, uh, just to experience your life and live your life to the fullest. I'm very satisfied. It's a, it's a learning process for me to be a part of a clothing company and, and a business. And uh, we have goals to open up stores in America, potentially open up stores in Europe, and uh, just grow the brand as much as we can and have awareness of Rock Out BU across the world. A player with an eclectic philosophy on life. Simple, yet stable. The only thing uh, I think about is today's practice, tomorrow's practice, and uh, just trying to live every day to the fullest. So in the future, whether it's a clothing company or starting a different company or being a coach or whatever it may be, just take it day by day and enjoy life. In Game 4 at the Mandela Forum in Florence, Taylor Rochester was one of the top scorers in the challenge between Montepaschi Siena and reigning champions Olympiakos Pireos. The Greek club started strongly with a 0-11 run led by Georgios Printesis with six points. None of the visitors scored in double figures. Vasilis Panoulis, Brian Dunstan, Matt Lojewski and Mirza Begic all scored nine points. Kim English and Taylor Rochester led Montepaschi with 13 points apiece, but at the final buzzer, the score was 62-70 for the visitors. Olympiakos rises to a 4-0 record. Europe's best airline powers up Europe's best league, Turkish Airlines EuroLeague. Demarcus Nelson, 28, from Oakland, California, is one of the most athletic guards of the league. His ability to attack the paint, in fact, is highlighted by his percentage by two points, very close to 70%. Marcus spent his entire college career in one of the most famous basketball programs of the USA, Duke. And it's only now that he's in his second season with the team from Belgrade that he realizes how important his time at Duke was. Belgrade is a very beautiful city. It's a nice city. The fans are great. Um, it's a great place to play basketball. So. It was a place that after a couple months that it really uh, reminded me of the community and the environment that I had in, when I was in college. In fact, playing in Belgrade is strangely as similar a place as you can get to the atmosphere of Durham, North Carolina, the city of Duke. The fans are incredible. In college, they were incredible. They showed up two, three days before the game. They studied their opponents. They went on the internet and tried to find secrets about each and every player so they can have chants and things to say about the players during the game. And uh, our fans here in Red Star, they're, they, they do the same thing. They're incredible. They're very loud. Uh, they're very passionate. They support the team. They want us to do the best job that we can. Uh, they even, you know, do some things that uh, throw, throw things on the court, you know, which here, uh, it really bothers the opponents. It really rattles the opponents, and it's good. They do whatever they can do to uh, make us have the advantage at home, and that's what, that's what home court advantage is about. 
They really give us a lot of a lot of uh, energy when we play, and it really gives us the support that we need to try to give us that extra, the sixth man. Unfortunately, Kervena Zvezda started their Turkish Airlines EuroLeague season with three defeats, but Demarcus and his teammates did everything in their power to avoid those defeats. That sometimes counts for more than the result itself. Here, the fans, obviously winning is, is key and winning is important. But I think the fans here, they understand the game and I think they, uh, a loss sometimes to them, long as we lose the right way, uh, to them is, is meaningful as well. And what I mean by that is as long as we, we play hard, uh, we fight to the end, we dive on the floor, we, we fight for the loose balls, the hustle plays, give the effort, is what I'm saying. Um, I think the fans appreciate that. Something he won't forget is what he and his Kervena Zvezda did Thursday night in Vitoria against Laboral Kucha. A great satisfaction for the Serbian players and for the supporters who have stuck with the team through thick and thin. In sport, you can't get too high, you can't get too high of emotion, you can't get too low when you're down. Uh, you have to stay level. And so for me, I try to uh, internalize everything when I'm excited. Uh, you'll see some emotion on my face, um, but not too much. Uh, even times when I'm struggling or a little bit down, uh, you'll see you know, me try to stay level. And so when the big moments come, uh, when the, the heavy pressure games come, I just try to stay level, um, relax. There's a model that my father taught me when I was a kid to, to turn the games into practice, meaning uh, the way that the mindset that you have in practice, the freedom that you play with when you practice when no one's in the gym, play with that same freedom mentally when everyone's in the gym. And that's, the, that's what I try to re remind myself. Nelson played his best game of the season, scoring his career high of 22 points, missing just two shots from the floor, adding seven rebounds and two assists for a performance index rating of 31 which meant he was the B-Win MVP for round four. It's, it's really amazing and it's special. It's a blessing. For me, I feel like I'm lucky. Um, you know, I, I play a game that I love to play. I think that I'm blessed playing this game. Um, and I can't do anything but just thank God for this. I'm just very fortunate and blessed and I just enjoy every moment of it. Kervén and Zvezda won their first Turkish Airlines EuroLeague match ever by 73-63 thanks to a terrific second half. And now, let's turn our attention to Broza Baskets, the German club based in Bamberg, Franconia, who last week managed to break what looked like a jinx. In the past, luck never seemed to favour Broza in the final minutes of the game. Back in the 2010-2011 season, for example, when Dior Fischer and Real Madrid mocked the Broza fans in Spain. Or when two games later Charles Smith slipped a sensational triple to give L'Automatica Roma victory. And the following year it ended in similar circumstances. In the fourth game of the 2011-2012 season against Malaga, Bernie Rodriguez punished Broza. Then in round seven, Milos Teodosic won the game for Seska. Last year in the top 16, the game against Madrid proved to be fatal again, this time because of Dante Draper. the music did not appear to change this season either. In round three, Broza almost found themselves down and out against Anadolu Efes following a two-pointer by Jamont Lucas. But then Casey Jacobson popped up with a triple that eventually sealed the win for Broza Baskets Bamberg, vindicating those previous defeats. EuroLeague, welcome to Freak City. 
Casey Jacobson is in his fifth consecutive year at Broza, sixth if you include the 2006-2007 season. Many years passed in a strikingly different culture to that of California, where he was born and raised, but these differences can also be seen as an advantage. I like to hang out with people who have different interests than I do. If I hang out around the same, the same people that think the same way that I do, I'm not going to grow intellectually or otherwise. And so to be around people from different cultures who speak different languages, you always learn something about yourself, about the world around you. His time in Europe has changed his outlook on life and on his career. When I was a student at Stanford University, I thought I knew everything, and it turns out I didn't know anything. <laughs> Rosa and Jacobson know that the key to overcoming the regular season is to play together. Their collective potential must be their strength. The best basketball teams are those that embrace everyone, uh, not just you know those who are the same skin color or the same ideas, but you embrace everybody, you learn together, you win and you lose together. And, uh, you know, our team, we try to um, instill a culture that we're all one. No matter where you come from, we're all one team. The, the sport of basketball has taught me so much about how to work with other people and, and be a part of something that's bigger than myself. And for that, I'm, I'm very grateful to the game of basketball. Europe's best airline powers up Europe's best league. Turkish Airlines EuroLeague. And now let's have a look at the top three of the week. Number three, Belgrade, Serbia. Great team play by Partizan NIS Belgrade. Tarrant Kinsey to Leo Vesterman, who connects with Joffrey Laverne for a super slam. Number two, Crete, Greece. Dimitris Diamantidis playing his 200th EuroLeague game, sends the ball high, and James Gist brings it down with another show-stopping alley-oop jam. And the number one player of the week still in Crete, Diamantidis of Panathinaikos, sinks an off-balance shot. But Krunoslav Simon of Lokomotiv Kuban runs the floor and stuns the crowd with the game-winning three-pointer on the buzzer. Kiev Palace of Sport will host the first ever Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Game of the Week, played in the Ukraine on Thursday night. Budivelnik Kiev will host the two-time EuroLeague champs of FC Barcelona, a challenge never seen before in a crucial game in its attempt to advance to the top 16. Two weeks ago, the newcomers in the competition managed their first win, edging partisan Nis Belgrade. And after a heavy defeat with JSF Nanterre, another home win is necessary in order to keep their hopes alive. Centre Darius Lavrinovic is the leader of the Ukrainian team. And together with swingman Mika Downs, forward Dewan Summers, and late addition Daniel Salinga, he will try to push his teammates towards an inspired performance with the added support of the fans to create a unique atmosphere. FC Barcelona is one of the most talented teams in the competition, but they are still searching for the right chemistry after many new additions. Two-time EuroLeague winner and 2013 rising star Kostas Papanikolaou is one of the most efficient and spectacular players in the competition. Massier Lampe, Joey Dorsey and Bastian Nakba are solid competitors underneath, while Mario Hezania is one of the most talented young players in the entire continent. And that is without having mentioned the all-time EuroLeague top scorer, Juan Carlos Navarro. 
2013 All Euroleague First Team Ante Tomic and one of the kings of assists, Marcelinho Huertas. Ukrainian basketball fans are expecting an explosive game on Thursday night when FC Barcelona visit Udivelnik Kiev in the next game of the week. Presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport.